everybody, I'm Maggie Adler, one of the curators at The Carter, and I am coming to you from my living room today um, to give you a virtual tour of the Perilous Texas Adventures of Mark Dion. And I thought, since it was a project that was about five years in the making, that I would try to do this all in under five minutes. So get out your timers and see if I'm successful. Um, so Mark is one of these artists, living artists working today, who has a deep, deep rela relationship with the past. So what he often does is he travels in the footsteps of 19th century botanists, explorers, naturalists, um, people who were exploring the world around them. And um, so what we thought we would do initially was send him in the footsteps of a 19th century traveler through Texas. And um, if you don't yet have a copy of The Perilous Texas Adventures of Mark Dion, um, pick it up online. I think it's a, it's a great book and it chronicles his journey. So we decided we were gonna send him in the footsteps of a Bostonian society lady named uh, Sarah Ann Hardinge. And basically Sarah was a watercolorist, an amateur watercolorist who inherited land that was granted to her brother in the Battle of Goliad. So he was a surgeon in the Battle of Goliad. So she came to Texas um, to try to find this piece of land. There was a map. She was never going to find this piece of land based on the map. It's basically like finding a location somewhere between a fire hydrant and a Starbucks. So the initial idea was the, with the exhibition was Mark would follow in Sarah Ann's footsteps and we'd show her watercolors. Well, um, I guess everything is bigger in Texas because um, when he made his first trip here, we pulled out about 300 works on paper from the collection, that all of which had to do with the artist's experience as travelers in the 19th century. So why did artists explore? They explored as naturalists, so um, like a John James Audubon trying to capture all the birds in America um, for scientific purposes, as botanists, um, so these naturalists were showing everything from um, bison to flowers to bird species all around the country and the world. Sometimes they didn't actually have much scientific knowledge uh, to back them up. We have a wall in the exhibition that's all bison, and you can see that some of those artists never saw a bison in the wild. It's everything from a rampaging cow to something that looks a little bit like a lion. So the the scientific veracity of this is, can be called into question. So one uh, reason that artists traveled in the 19th century was as naturalists. Another reason was to document native cultures. And um, in this part of the exhibition, I really want you to understand that um, exploration is not just a function of Anglo explorers. Um, so people had been uh, living on the land and understanding its flora and fauna for millennia before white explorers started to claim plant species and animal species as their own scientific discoveries. The next section of the exhibition has to do with investigations of the West. So artists were the first people to bring back reports of what they were seeing in the areas like around Yellowstone and, and they were responsible for taking images and painting images that would encourage the government to set aside land for the national parks. So artists like Thomas Moran, Bierstadt, and photographers like William Henry Jackson who were traveling with, um, with surveys and uh, governmental surveys. And what I show you in this section as well is a big glass plate negative. And I show this to you because I want you to know how difficult 19th century travel was. A glass plate negative was big, it was heavy, and photographers had to carry them by mule back into places that we hike to today. So picture William Henry Jackson carrying a major glass, uh, a stack of glass plate negatives on a mule um, through wilderness that he hasn't explored before, um, and in, including his mobile darkroom to pre prepare the plates. So it's really an extraordinary achievement for these artists to be uh, traveling through Yellowstone and carrying all their gear with them on the way. So I want you to have a sense of what it takes to travel. 